Hello, algebra students. So bust out your formula sheet and your GED calculator if you don't already have it. Pause me. I'll wait as long as you need <laughs> to take, okay? <laughs> so first example, find all solutions to the equation x squared is equal to 14x minus 33. So a few things I want you to notice. Um, I want you to realize right away that this is what we call a quadratic equation. And I have some clues there that it's a quadratic. First one is that I see that I have an x squared term. So, and I have no x's to any powers higher than that. So no like x cubed, x fourth, not that you would on the GED. But mind you, the point is that if your highest exponent is a two on your variable, then we're looking at a quadratic equation. Now, we've seen sometimes where we could solve things where there was an x squared using our like wisdom principles, our working opposites in order to get the letter alone, but it's not going to work for you when you have a square term and a regular x term. We're going to need more methods. We're going to ne need to use um, some methods to solve quadratic equations. We need a bigger toolbox than just the wisdom principles. Another clue here that we're looking at quadratics is the way the answers are. Notice that it says find all solutions, and then we see the answers in these curly brackets. These curly brackets here uh, are what we call set notation, or I shouldn't say set notation, but they represent a set, meaning like a bag. So it's like a bag with two answers, three and 11 in it. It's not like when we have a point where we have two numbers with a comma. This means, the point means an X and a Y. With this curly bracket, 3 and 11, that means I have two possible x's. Either 3 makes this thing true, or, well, either isn't good language because it's and. So how about 3 makes this whole thing true, and 11 makes this whole tr thing true. That's what that particular answer would say. All that to say, this is a quadratic. We need quadratic methods. The one that we've learned in this unit is the GED formula sheet has what we call the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula looks like this. And you can look at it on your formula sheet, all right? You do not need to memorize it. At least not yet. You might in college. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4ac all over, make that fraction bar nice and long from the negative to the c, all the way from the start to the end to a. Now you can see in order to find x, I need three letters. I need a b, the b's, I need the a's, and I need the c's. And I need to get those three letters, the A, B, and the C, from this quadratic equation. But remember, 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 remember a billion times over that, that you can only see the A, B, and C if the quadratic equation is equal to zero. You actually have to get everything to the same side. X is feeling social in a quadratic, all right? I say a quadratic equation is a party. You want it equal to zero. And we can see here it's not equal to zero. We have x squared is equal to 14x minus 33. And so my very first step has got to be to get all these terms to the same side to get this thing equal to zero. I like the fact that um, x squared is positive. Even though I have two terms on the right-hand side, I think I'll bring the terms on the right over to the left in order to keep that positivity on my x squared. So 14x is a term because see that 14x minus 33 is something adding or subtracting, but it's positive. So I'm going to take it away through minusing and it's going to go over to the left hand side. And I'm going to take 33 at the same time. Roll with me, guys. You can do this. If you're GED ready, you're, you can handle two acts of subtraction in the same line. So I want that minus 33 to go away. I'll add 33. That'll make it zero out. And again, I'm going to do it to the other side. Oh, I have to squeeze it in somewhere. Okay. And now let's see what happens. So you might say, how am I supposed to add all those things? You're not, you just write them down on the same side. So now I have X squared. I'm going to do my 
regular x term next, and then I'm going to do my plain old number last. And that's going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to zero. Hey, it's in standard form. Now I can see my a, my b, and my c. Your a is the first number, the number with x squared. You say, there's no number there. Okay, it's a one. Right? The invisible coefficient is one. You can see your b, it's the number with x. Now careful. The number with x is negative 14. That minus means it's a negative 14. And then you can see your c, 33. And now you have all the information you need to plug into this. By the way, if you guys know the shorter way to do this, factoring, I haven't taught that in this unit. I'll teach it in another unit, but you can feel free to use it. But for now, we learned our formula skills, so that's why we're doing it this way. So x is equal to negative b, or another way to think of this as the opposite of b. So what is my b? Negative 14. So the opposite of that would be positive 14 plus or minus. Don't freak out by the plus or minus sign. It just means we'll have two answers, but we're not going to deal with it yet. It's so the square root of b squared. Now careful, b is a negative number. When you plug it in, make sure you use your parentheses or you will get a wrong answer. So the whole negative 14 squared, including the minus sign. That's what those parentheses say. Minus 4 times a, my a is just 1, times c, my c is 33, all over 2 times a. I know I'm going slow, but I'm trying to make sure that I'm really neat on this so you guys can follow my work. Okay, now you can type this entire thing into the GED calculator, but it's a little weird sometimes in how it gives the answers. So what I'm going to do is I like to just simplify on around that plus minus sign. So I have numbers in front, this whole big funky thing behind, and then that number, that grouping on the bottom. I'm going to deal with each one of those individually before I handle the plus minus symbol. So x is equal to that first group. There's nothing to do. It's just 14. I'll put it there. Plus minus. Now that second one, that square root of yada, 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 I'm going to plug that entire thing into my calculator. I'm going to make sure I'm in math print mode for quadratic equations. Ooh, let me not forget those parentheses. So the square root of open parentheses, negative 14, close parentheses, square it, minus 4 times 1 times 33, all under the square root symbol. Ah, that whole thing becomes 8. So it's 14 plus or minus 8 over, and that's a separate grouping, so 2 times 1 is 2. All right, now it's time to deal with the fact that this is a plus or minus. So what does that mean? It means there's two answers. Quadratic equations have two answers. So 14 plus 8 over 2 and 14 minus 8 over 2 are both answers to this quadratic equation. And now that there's no plus minus sign, you can plug that entire thing into your calculator, and I think I will. Although it would be not too bad to simplify by hand. So 14 plus 8 over 2, what is that, 11? 11. And 14 minus 8 over 2. 14 minus 8, style, that's 6. You guys, I should totally be able to do this in my head. But it is very early in the morning and I haven't finished my coffee. Why am I always making videos before coffee? This is why I have to redo so many videos. Okay, so two answers and we were right all along. We could have just tested them, I suppose. A is 3, 11. 3 and 11. Both 3 and 11 could be x values. Now that being said, I can think off the top of my head of at least four ways to solve this equation here. So using the quadratic equation like we have is kind of the long, slow way up the mountain with these examples. Um, there are faster ways. But look at the next one. Solve 5 is equal to 2a squared minus 6a plus 8. That one is a little bit of a different story. Why? Because of the answers. So first of all, it's still a quadratic. See how my variable a this time has a square on it? And it's still a quadratic that I would be really pressed to be able to solve using my old three wisdom principle method because... There's not just an a squared, there's a plain old a term as well. I do want one 
of my methods for quadratics. Now, you might know a lot of different ways. You might say, Kate, uh, your way is long and slow. I factor. But take a look at the example. I mean, the answers this time. Uh, factoring is not your friend. You're going to get these funky answers. Don't they look like that quadratic equation? Look at those. X is equal to something plus or minus with that radical sign. Quadratic equation is the way to go this time, guys. We need the long, slow way sometimes. All right. So I'm going to bust that sucker out again. X is equal to, and again, you don't have to memorize it. It's on your formula sheet. Negative B plus or minus the square root. Every time I say it, I want to sing because there's a little song for it. So if you have to memorize it in college, go Google quadratic equa equation, pop goes the weasel, and sing it so it'll help you memorize it. So there we go. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And now we need our a, our b, and our c. But remember, you can only find your a, your b, and c if this whole sucker is equal to 0. A quadratic equation is a party. We want everybody on the same side. Almost everybody's together. It's just that little 5. And so... I am going to do the work to get rid of it. And the first time I did this problem by myself, I did the common student error of forgetting to move the five and it started getting real funky. So maybe that was your issue, but I'm going to take the five away from that left-hand side and put it on the right. And I'm writing it right under eight because I know that plain old numbers combine with other plain old numbers. And let's see what my quadratic equation will be now in what we call standard form. So 5 minus 5 is 0, and then that's going to be equal to, I haven't done anything to change the a squareds. I haven't done anything to change the a terms, but 8 minus 5 is positive 3. And now I can see my a, my b, and my c, which is a little weird because I have an a in this equation, but don't worry about it. When I talk about your a in this formula, I'm talking about the number in front of a squared. So in this case, it's not a one. I actually do have a number, it's a two. My b is negative six, don't forget the sign. And my c is positive three or just three. And now I can plug into my equation. So x is equal to Negative b, or the opposite of b. Well, b is negative 6. It's already negative. So the opposite of that is going to be positive 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Make sure you use parentheses around negative numbers before squaring them. I want my voice in your head. Don't forget it. Most common student error. Minus 4 times a times c. Oh, it's not long enough. It never is all over to a and a was two all right once again i like simplifying around the plus minus symbol um, in one two three pieces so let's do that x is equal to no simplifying to do at the front it's just six plus minus Oh, I shouldn't put the radical yet. I don't know what it is. Last time it simplified to a whole number. Let's do it in our calculator. Square root. Open up parentheses before I take my negative 6 and square it. Minus, make sure you use a minus with the 4, times 2, close parentheses, times 3, close parentheses. And I get this interesting answer. 2 square root of 3. This is one case where you don't want a decimal answer. Keep it like that with a radical. A simplified uh, radical is better than a decimal because mathematicians like exact answers. Plus, you can see it in your answer key. Look at that. They have radicals in them. And that's going to be all over. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, great. Now, I'm not going to be able to do the plus minus here. Last time I broke it up because I had regular numbers, right? Like 14 plus 8 is something I can do. But I can't take 6 and add 2 square root of 3. It's kind of like having 6 plus 2x, right? They're not like terms. One of them is a plain old number. One of them is some number of x's. I can't combine them. Same thing here. I have 6 
plus or minus two square roots of three. One's a plain old number, one's some number of square roots of three. I can't combine them. But what I can do is reduce this fraction. Don't make the common student error of getting tempted by A because it looks like it has most of the numbers you need. Oh, it has a six, it has a square root of three, it, it has a four, maybe I screwed up with that too. No, these suckers can reduce if, if, let me say it again and I'm gonna change the color on it. The three whole numbers, all three of them now have something in common. Why, why does it have to be all three? Remember, a fraction is an act of division. So that four is dividing both of those terms, the six and the two square root of three. So in order to reduce it, you would need a common factor of all three of those numbers. Well, they're all even, right? They all divide by two. So let's do it. Six divided by two is three. Two divided by two is just one. I have a single square root of three. And four divided by two is two. And let me just rewrite it so you can see it before we go to the answer key. So then x is equal to 3 plus or minus. Well, what I have here is 1 square root of 3. I'm going to write it up at the top here. But just like when we have 1x, we don't brag about it. We just call it x. If we have 1 square root of 3, we can just call it square root of 3. So square root of 3 all over. Two. C is the correct answer. I'm a jerk. All right, you guys. Were those challenging? Yeah, yeah. I wanted it to be, right? We're in the we're in the um advanced mode here. But once again, don't panic. Like maybe 90% of students that I work with that pass their GED never get to this level of being able to do quadratic equations. Because you only need half right to pass the GED math test. You don't technically have to master this skill in order to pass with a, with a pretty nice score. However, it's always on the test. So you could get a point or two by mastering it and as really good college prep. You will, 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 if you go into college algebra, have to master the quadratic formula. You just will. It's, it's a very useful sucker. So anyway, all that to say, Super proud of you guys. I know it was challenging, but you guys do hard work for me. <laughs> okay. Happy learning.